All right, folks, it is that time. If you have a seat that is in between you, please collapse down, specifically you, sir. Thank you very much. If you would bring it in close. All right, with that, we are going to go ahead and kick everything off. I would like to introduce Iggy to the stage. Thank you. Volks? Volks. Yeah. Uh, uh. Uh, so hello Defcon and welcome to my talk calling, called uh, Ticking SQLi and we will begin. So what's in it for you today? Today we will uh, explore uh, types of SQL injection. We will focus a bit on uh, time-based time SQL injection. We will see the impact uh, Team Ghost Shell did in the past using these kinds of techniques. We will understand why it's still relevant today and you will have a good time with a pretty much good presenter today. Uh, so who am I? Uh, my name is Igor, uh, but please call me Iggy. It's my nickname since, since childhood. I'm a security engineer at Axonius. Uh, one sentence about Axonius is uh, assets, uh, it's cybersecurity asset management platform that maps all your, all your digital assets across your organization, normalizes them, deduplicates them, and give you comprehensive insights about them and much more. And why I'm here today? I'm here today because I love learning stuff, and especially in cybersecurity. Uh, since from low level to high level, from lock picking to RFIDs, and I'm studying a lot. And throughout my studies, I came to this idea to talk about this uh, topic today. And the last thing about me, it's the first time I'm presenting, so thank you, AppSec Village, for giving me this opportunity today to be in such an honorable uh, stage as AppSec Village and Defcon. I truly appreciate it. And we'll begin. We'll begin by introducing what is SQL injection. SQL injection is uh, a technique where attackers insert malicious SQL code into some input fields. It can be login forms, uh, search boxes, or URL parameters. And they, they do it um, mainly to retrieve uh, sensitive information from the database for the application. Uh, they can retrieve sensitive information, delete tables, uh, and a lot of things that we'll see in the next slides. Uh, but the bottom line here is the attackers using uh, some malicious SQL payload uh, to manipulate the web application and the database behind it to retrieve some and to do some uh, sensitive operations. Uh, a little bit, but okay. Uh, the, the example that I like the most to s show uh, the, wh what it is a SQL injection is to see how it looks uh, through the code. We have a query where the username and the password flows to its parameters. In the UI it looks something like this. You get a login form. It's like to demonstrate the most basic type of SQL injection. Uh, you have the username, you can enter admin and some malicious payload to the password that may basically means a single quote and some all condition that always evaluates to true. Uh, this flows to the query. The username, if the username gets the admin and the password uh, gets some payload that always evaluates to true. And by that, the attacker can bypass the authentication because it's sending it to the web application that sending it to the, its database and it retrieves authentication bypass. Uh, we have some different types of SQL uh, injection. First type called in-band or classic. Uh, what essentially it means that you uh, see the results of your payload directly in HTTP response. Uh, actually, it also can be served as self-category, uh, but I want to stick as many resources as state in it. So we have the in-band that you see the response directly into the uh, web application. It also divided to two categories. One of them is error-based. Uh, sorry. Uh, error-based, what it means is uh, that you rely on uh, errors that you retrieve from the database uh, to see some sensitive information. And you have a union-based type. Uh, what it means, in general, we will in a second see demonstration for this, but uh, in one sentence, union-based is concatenating two data, two data, so uh, tables uh, into one that contains both of them. Uh, or we can say that it's two select statements that combined into one result. Uh, we combine to some uh, 
expected data, uh, additional uh, concatenation of a table that retrieves sensitive information. We will see it in uh, the next slides. Uh, so to demonstrate the error-based error SQL injection, we can see that we we should try uh, to probe up the application. Uh, most of the times we will try uh, through one single quote and two single quotes is the most type of entry points, but you have additional entry points and comments. And you're starting to get a sense of uh, some error-based uh, attack when you get from the one single quote uh, 500 internal server error. And and for the double single quotes, uh, 200, okay. What it means that the SQL query behind it in the back end cannot uh, uh, process the uh, the query correctly because it's not expected to receive 500 internal server error. And if you close it in single quotes, it suddenly is okay. So there's some probably manipulation that you can do on, on the SQL. So we'll try to do some manipulation. We can send a curl command that uh, looks a bit messy, but it's very simple. It's uh, trying to convert the version, a function that you send to the database to retrieve its version. You try to co uh, convert it to an integer and compare it to one, just the, so the well close will operate correctly. Uh, it will look something like this when it flows to the query. And you get the error, uh, converse, uh, convert conversion failed, you get the MySQL, that the server uses MySQL with a specific version, and by this, by this we retrieve uh, sensitive information. Uh, I want to state here that uh, something important, I stick to this example of, uh, of retrieving the version of the database in many additional slides that you will see later. I like this example because it's not too basic and not too advanced, it's something in the middle, so it's easy to show it. But in these techniques, you can do something even more advanced to retrieve hash passwords and so on. So, but we'll stick to the version because it's truly a real world example on one hand, but on the other hand, it's not too complex. So now we'll move to the union based as we showed before. And uh, this uh, presenting um, expected regular um, curl command to uh, server that I build. We send query equals to Alice and we'll retrieve some expected information. But when we try to manipulate with a union uh, attack, we will edit a union, select the first, oh, the user that is currently connected to the database um, through the web application. Uh, we of course need to encode it and send it to the server and that's what we get. We get the Alice, the query equals to Alice as we see so before and we get the current user that's connected to the database through the web application and this is information that not supposed to be retrieved especially so easy so this is how union based attack looks like after that we have many resources uh, divided into these categories uh, one of them is out of band i won't uh, elaborate about it too much because it's something not so popular but to say it, uh, to explain it in one or two sentences, out of band attacks are a kind of attacks that you cannot communicate with the web application, the server directly, and you need to utilize some external server to exfiltrate data through the database, and you use uh, some HTTP requests and DNS queries to exfiltrate this data, but it's something much uh, not so common, so we won't elaborate about it too much. Uh, the third kind, uh, inferential or blind uh, type of SQL injection is in general a bit of the opposite of the in-band of course. It's type of attacks that you cannot um, uh, see your payload or the results of your payload directly in the web page and you need to infer the results of your payload uh, from the behavior of the web application. It is divided to two categories, one of them is Boolean based. Uh, I will explain by, by example, uh, but generally speaking, it uh, evaluates your payload to two or false uh, in some way of behavior of the web application. And like that, you can uh, infill the results. Uh, to see example of it, uh, I will show you by demonstrating on BWeb. It's a buggy web application. It's a cool application to practice on. You can see here a payload of substring uh, to the version of the database. Uh, in short, what it means, it uh, takes the version, checks the first character, and compares it uh, to six in this case, and comments all the rest. 
we flow it to the search field and we see that the movie does not exist. But when we change the 6 to a 5 and we we'll flow it again to the search box, we get that the movie does exist. So we can infill by that that when you compare it to 5s, the first character of the version of the database is starting with a 5. And this kind of, uh, in this kind of blind SQL injections, uh, you need to uh, enumerate, uh, enumerate uh, each character and, uh, until you get the whole picture. Uh, but that's how it looks like. And the last type of uh, inferential blind that we'll focus a bit more today called time-based. Time-based, in a way, it's similar to Boolean-based, but it relies on a time delays that you get from the server. And that's how you can infill your uh, SQL payload uh, by sending a time delay of, for example, uh, 10 seconds. The database is delayed with this, its response for 10 seconds. And that's how you can infill if your payload was evaluated to, to, to true or false. Uh, and that's how a time blind SQL injection will look like. Uh, to my web server, I added uh, a parameter of elapsed time to see how much it takes to the server to respond. So in particular query, uh, well, it equals to Alice, the elapsed time was immediate. But when we try to run a time-based payload, uh, uh, for example, that we look like this with a closing single quote, uh, so the SQL uh, payload will operate uh, normally and a sleep command that causes the, the server to delay for five seconds, we encode it, and we will uh, construct in the URL, sending it back, and we can suddenly see that with the sleep command of five seconds, the elapsed time was five seconds. So in general, what it means that the time delay was successfully executed. Uh, before we continue about time delays, I want to elaborate a bit about tools. It will be connected. Uh, there are many tools to uh, uncover SQL injection. One of them is a bit less popular, uh, called Havage. I decided to include it because when I researched about Tim Goschel, uh, some resources stated they used this tool and I never uh, met it before. And it's a tool that was used back then a uh, few years ago, but it's still uh, people can use it today, but it's much less popular or good tool. Uh, we have uh, many dust tools like uh, uh, personally here is a, a belt suit by Paul Swiggle that can scan your site uh, as a dust tool and find the SQL injection uh, as we see here in the picture that I scanned my uh, web server. But the most uh, common tool for SQL injection and uncovering them is called SQL map. Uh, I'm so happy that I uh, zoomed in on what's relevant. So. SQL map will look something like this. Uh, you run SQL command on the URL that you want to scan. In this example, we see a batch command that what it means is a non-interactive command that uh, won't interfere in the process of executing. And please retrieve us the database version. When we run it, we can see that uh, SQL map uncovers that we have a Boolean based, uh, time based, and union, union attacks here. And we see the stuff that we wanted to retrieve, that the database uses uh, SQLite behind the curtain. Uh, to show you, of course, SQL map can do a bit more advanced stuff, like in this example. Uh, we can execute SQL map with a time delay of five seconds. I'll run it with a batch command as before. And please, please uh, return us the banner of the database. And we can see that it successfully works. We can retrieve the banner of uh, the tweak equals to 8.3.0. And before I continue to the next slides, I want to emphasize something important that, uh, from my personal opinion, we cannot rely on uh, many automation tools. Uh, we always need to have the ability to write our own scripts to some particular cases. We don't need to be afraid. And like in a perfect world, we need to master a combination of the two. We can master the automating tools and writing our own scripts. And a script of uh, executing time delay can look something uh, simple as, as this. We can have a script with, uh, of course, some constants and uh, some expected parameters. But in general, it will be divided to three functions. One function that will check the delay of the HTTP response. 
and we'll call it. The second function will extract the version character. It uh, takes the position that we are checking in our payload. Uh, it compares it to the character. Character uh, enumerates through all the ASCIIs. It compares to the position in the version that we want to retrieve. If it got the sleep time, then it means that we successfully executed it. Or if not, uh, it didn't work. And the first function, it uh, uh, continues to enumerate all the next indexes in the version number and recalls the version that we are retrieving of the database. And eventually, it will look something like this when we are running it. Extracting the database version. So it's very simple, simple as that, uh, as we can see. Uh, to move to a bit uh, more real world examples, I want to show you a uh, few stuff. One of them, a uh, real world example uh, of a guy called Mola. He is uh, YouTube and uh, his uh, site. Uh, I really like to learn about uh, real world examples because it uh, really demonstrates what, what we need, what's truly important. Uh, and here he claims that he earned a bounty of $5,000 uh, finding the next payload that you will see to in a first billing uh, site. Uh, what he claims that he did to execute this bounty, he ran a steep command that we saw before, uh, concatenated to some uh, parameter that the site had, uh, per page equals to one, and execute a time delay. He got truly a uh, five seconds delay. Then he executed this payload. This, this payload is exactly as the substring we saw before. The mid is equals to the substring, but uh, particular to MySQL version. And it checks the version fills character. Uh, if it equals to five, go to sleep for 15 seconds. If not, return zero. And in this case, it doesn't, it didn't get uh, any delay. But when he uh, changed the five to eight, he could successfully gain a 15 seconds delay. And by that, he gained the bounty. Just to show you a bit more uh, real-world examples, uh, one of them uh, looks something like this. It's some bounty that uses XOR, an interesting uh, payload that always evaluates to true, and some bounty that was discovered in the Department of uh, Defense uh, in Hacker One system. The second one was uh, pretty simple uh, concatenation to par expected parameters of uh, sleep seven seconds, also disclosed to Hacker One. Um, and found in the automatic uh, website. And the third one, my favorite, uh, combines uh, script, union, and sleep commands. Uh, some build a uh, combination of, of all of them. Uh, okay. Ah, and the third bounty gained uh, what I found for my resources when I checked it, uh, got bounty of $2,100. So, um, all of those stuff that we've seen was utilized by uh, Tim Goschel in the past. Uh, they used a lot of SQL injection, especially time delays. Something given uh, what they did, uh, they, was, they were operating uh, in 2012, and they utilized even simpler uh, SQL commands that we, SQL injection commands than, than what we saw before. And as I said, they were operating in 2012. They are not related to APT39 or some Iranian government. They actually were an uh, activist group. Uh, I'm just curious, how many people of you uh, know what activism is? Please raise your hands. Okay, okay, no, not bad, approximately half. So activism is uh, when you attacking group that uh, trying to promote some uh, political change or some social agenda that you believe in and you promote it by hacking. And that's what Team Ghost Shell will, they will a uh, hacktivist collective. And just to see what they did and who they will, uh, they started to operate in 2012, they hacked the University of Arkansas uh, because some, one of the guys there uh, called Zoom was arrested. So they hacked it in terms of protest. Uh, after that, Dead Melox, uh, uh, was will appealed was appealed. Uh, Dead Melox was the admin of the group. He appealed in their uh, main communication channel uh, in Pacebin, stating that he doesn't, in a ironic way, that he doesn't want to fight with FBI or CIA or something like this. But on the other hand, we will leak a bunch of stuff uh, in the um, coming year. 
So as he promised, he started. Uh, they started to uh, make additional hacking projects. Uh, they uh, had Project Dragonfly where they hacked uh, China government and leaked uh, thousands of uh, sensitive information. Uh, it included like hash passwords, some personal data, and like everything they got. Later, Hellfire in Project Hellfire, they hacked uh, governments, financial sectors, and uh, other companies. In Project Westwind, they focused on universities around the globe, from Harvard, Stanford, to University of Rome and Tokyo. And they even declared a war uh, in Project Black Star against Russia. Uh, in, in all of these projects, they hacked like uh, they uh, leaked uh, thousands to millions of uh, records from uh, personal information to hash passwords, as I said before. But many of this information was publicly already disclosed. Still, on the other hand, it was uh, sensitive information that truly was uh, released. But what they achieved from it, it uh, they achieved their main uh, cause to raise uh, awareness to their activism and to their operations. So later, they, in Project Y Fox, they basically hacked everyone to raise awareness to hacktivism. And they uh, introduced their uh, new cool logo. Later came Sunrise Act South Africa. Uh, 2015 introduced a new term of dark activism, that raising the normal activism into cyber warfare levels in a much more scale. And in 2016, this story came to an end when the Dead Melox, the leader, came clean. He came clean to some uh, newspaper, uh, sent them an email that, hi, it's me. I'm uh, Eugene, the man who behind the Dead Melox, the leader of Team Goshel. He sent his passport and even a picture. They still didn't believe them, him, so he posted on his Twitter account to the next web, the journal that he came clean to, that, hello, it's truly me. So, why, why they did what they did? Uh, as typical for hacktivism, for example, West Wind, the hack to uh, raise awareness, oops, raise awareness to the fallen students, standards of the education today. In Black Star, they uh, uh, claim that the Russian is a government of tyranny and, uh, and regret. They uh, criticize their government. In White Fox, uh, essentially, they wanted to promote hacktivism worldwide and draw attention to the freedom of uh, information. And they had many other causes, like even on Japan, they wanted to piss them off just, just as it is. So why the hell the, I want you, all of you to know this today. I know that you are thinking SQL injection is old and Team Gold Shell was operated in 2012, but I will show you that what is old is still worth gold. Uh, we can see some statistics. In our top 10, uh, SQL injection is part of the injection section. It's still on the top. Uh, in many years, it was the first one, and now it's like the third one. Ah, oops, I didn't, like, it confused me for a second. Yes, there was, okay. NVD is ranking uh, SQL injection, uh, ranking it uh, in the second place for many, many years. Uh, it considered one of the most stubborn weaknesses ranked in the third place uh, by Mitre. And um, GitHub Security Advisor also stating that, and it's truly stated, that SQL injection is not relevant to model languages like Vue, React, Python, stuff like this. But for my opinion, what's important to know here that the concepts or uh, the mindset that you set for yourself when you're learning about these attacks can be implemented to many other fields because they are all related. They, you can use similar techniques to other attacks. And if I still didn't convince you, you can earn bug bounties easily using those kinds of techniques, like this one, uh, was disclosed critical vulnerability to the Department of Defense. And so we are coming to an end, and I want to leave you with some homework. I don't want to state here uh, 10 resources, but I want to state one and good one that uh, I use. I don't get money by Boltzwigel, by the way. I truly recommend them because it's free resource, uh, theoretical and practical combined, very recommended, and it dives deep. So to recap, it's hard to make a 25-minute lecture because I want to talk about many stuff, and I only have 25 minutes. So I tried my best, and if you gain even one small little thing today, I will be genuinely happy. 
And that's it. If you want to connect with me, like LinkedIn and Twitter. And that's it. Thank you.